Welcome back you lovely bunch, thanks for tuning in, I hope you're all doing good. Right, so you've been training all winter, you've been getting the miles in, you've been on the turbo, you've been out in the rain, so it's the time of year where the races have started, there's events kicking off, and it's time to put all that training that you've been doing over the winter months into good use. But one thing people often overlook is the condition of their bike. So you spend ages training, put all these hours into training, then you turn up at your first event, well your bike's just not tip top condition, and you have a mechanical, and that sucks. Why would you put in all that work just to fail at the first hurdle? So today we're gonna have a little bit of a chat about how to get your bike in tip top condition for those races and events you've got planned for the summer because the last thing you want is a mechanical a puncher bolts to come loose a pedal to fall off there's so much that can go wrong and all you need really is a set of allen keys and some chain oil there's not a lot of stuff you'll need so we're not taking everything apart all we're doing is we're making sure that we tighten everything up or that everything is tight because honestly, the last thing you need is the wrong bolt to rattle loose. So I did Grinduro in California a few years ago, and there was this really weird rattling noise coming from my bike, and I couldn't work out for the life of me what it was. I was riding a new bike, I put it together myself, and, and it's a rattly course. And it turned out that the top cap was really loose and the stem was starting to loosen. And I just hadn't tied it up enough at the start. I'd like got my bars in the right position, but I hadn't gone and done that final check. And it could have been pretty bad if it wasn't actually as tight as it was. And luckily I noticed, but that's the last thing you need on a race or an event or like your wheel falling off or not having enough sealant in the tires. So that's what we're gonna run through today. So yeah, what to tighten, where to oil. I mean, we know where to oil. I mean, that's, you know, you oil your handlebars to keep them nice and slippy. And also I do need to top up a little bit of fluid in my brakes or just the front one because I like it to be quite quick to pull, if you know what I mean. Like I don't like to pull it all the way to the bars before it engages. Basically, Ellie, look, this little funnel, it didn't fit. I needed to buy an adapter. Now it fits. And I've been riding my brakes slightly badly set up for quite a while. So before my next race, which is this weekend, we're gonna do a quick run through, set up the bike, tighten everything up, clean down the right bits and, and oil the wrong bits. I'm gonna put all these things down. I've, I've got enough props. Let's start. So first things first, four mil Allen key. That's all you need really for this. And this is pretty much for my bike, Every bolt on the bike, like the bottle cages, the seat posts, the stem, everything is a four mil. You're not gonna need a lot of tools to do this, but it is just going through. I do it front to back. There's a lot of bolts on these bikes, especially gravel bikes. You know, you've got like bolts on your fork, you've got bolts on your top tube. And like, whilst these aren't gonna be catastrophic if they fall out, the last thing you want is this rattly noise when you're going over bumps where you can't work out where it's coming from or it's distracting or just annoying. And then you lose a bolt and that's just really annoying. So what you do is you get your Allen key and you just go through and I literally just make sure. Yeah, see, they're loose. I haven't done this since Battle on the Beach and bolts just work loose. I ride a lot of like quite rough terrain. So the bolts do get like rattled loose. And I do kind of pay special close attention. See, important, important pointy one. Pay special attention to your headset because you don't want your headset coming loose and your forks to fall out and ugh, not that it's gonna like, I mean, it's probably not gonna happen like that. You know, it will just make a really annoying rattly noise. If it's not tight and it rattles about, it can definitely cause damage to the front of your bikes. So definitely do check that your headset and your stem and everything is really tight, bars are tight, your hoods are tight. It will make your bike last longer, you know? So once you've tightened every bolt, you know, do the rear mech hanger, do the frame, do the seat post, tighten up where your saddle goes on, you know? Because you don't want that going loose. You don't want, basically, one loose bolt here can make that snap. That's like basically your race over. And if you can prevent these things just by using a couple of Allen keys, why would you not? I'm not gonna go into setting up your gears here. I'm assuming that your gears work. So we're just gonna clean the chain, apply some lube, and then check everything runs and get everything all like nicely lubed up. My chain's not that dirty, it's just more dusty. So I'm gonna wipe it down, get a lot of the dust off and put some dry lube on. Um, I'm gonna use dry lube because I'm hoping that it's gonna be dry in this race at the weekend. Otherwise I'm gonna have to wipe it down and then reapply some wet lube. So fingers crossed for some this weekend. If you've deep cleaned your bike before this, you know, it's just a matter of like oiling your chain. What you wanna make sure you're doing here is just get off like any grit. So you see there's not a lot on mine, you know, so it's not actually that bad. But that just means that the oil is not gonna be spreading like dirt and dust over everything. And then the other thing is like, get, make sure you clean all your chain rings as well. So I apply a little bit to each chain link individually. And then I give it a few pedals, run it through the gears, and then I wipe it all down. And that's pretty much all you need to do. So that's the chain all oiled, drivetrain's running really smoothly, the bolts are all tight. I know when I'm racing this weekend that I'm not gonna have, well, if I do have a mechanical, it's gonna be a puncher. It's not gonna be because my bolts are falling out or my headset's falling off or my seat is falling off or, fingers crossed, I kind of feel like I'm tempting fate a little bit here. So the last thing I need to do is I do actually wanna to top up a little bit of sealant in my tires just in case, you know, I feel like you can never have too much sealant. And then I'm gonna try and put a bit more fluid in my front brake. I'm gonna be honest, I've only ever set up brakes before once, and that was on my stayer. 
and I didn't really set them up, you know, that was just putting a bit more fluid in. So, armchair bike mechanics and actual bike mechanics. I'm sorry if I'm doing this wrong, but this is what kind of worked for me last time. And this isn't a how to set up your brakes video. I am very likely to be making a mistake on the brakes and fingers crossed I don't completely mess up my bike before this race. Let's top up some sealant and then fingers crossed sort this brake out. Right, so my plan was to use a syringe to squirt in my sealant through the valve cap. That is the easiest way to do it, I'm gonna be honest. I use stand sealant, right? And it's the race sealant. And the difference between the race sealant and the normal sealant is this has like bigger bits in it. So it's, well, it just fills bigger holes, you know? So that's what I use. Downside is, well, the end of the syringe is um, a lot smaller and, and the sealant is sealing the syringe. So I'm actually gonna have to pull the tire off and then just pour the sealant in. I mean, it's not too bad. If your tires seal or they've already sealed on one side, fingers crossed, it won't be too much of a mission to get it back on again. You do the same with the front as you do with the back. I'm not going to show you how to do both because you guys, they're the same wheels, aren't they? Well, apart from one's the back and one's the front. So top up both your tyres, tighten your bolts, oil your chain, and that's pretty much all I'd say you need to do to be ready for those races and those long rides, and you won't be worried about, like, your bike falling apart. You still need to take the right spares with you as well. And if you want to know about spares that I take with me on long rides, let me know down below, and we can do a very long-winded, chatty, distracted, waffly video about what I take on a bike ride. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly top up my hydraulic fluid. Hopefully I don't mess this up. Wish me luck. Right, so there's just a little bleed port screw here, and this should be really loose. It shouldn't actually be that tight. You don't need to do it tight. And when you take it out, make sure you keep the O-ring. Can you see that? Keep this little bit safe. Like I say, I don't actually know what I'm doing, so this isn't a how-to video. And then what I think I do is, correct me if I'm wrong, right? I think you pour a little bit of fluid in here. So if you just want to like try and like burp a bit of air out, what you can do is actually you can just take out the little stopper and you pull your brake and you'll see a lot of the uh, a lot of little bubbles coming out. And if you kind of tap along the line, like the brake hose, like that will make the bubbles come out even more. But the problem with mine is I can't do it from this end. It's not just getting the bubbles out of the system, it's putting some more oil in there. So we'll put the bung back in for now. So what you do is you go to the other end of the fork and you squirt through some hydraulic oil, take this bung out and the oil will go all the way through the system and start bubbling there. And I do that whilst kind of holding down the brake. And as I squirt the oil in, it will like get the brake to the point where I like it. That's when I'll stop, I'll put the bung in and I'll tighten off the release valve down at the bottom. I'll show you what I'm talking about down, down the bottom. Let's go, come down here with me. Full disclaimer, don't know what I'm doing, don't copy me. One thing I definitely know for sure is you do not want to get hydraulic fluid oil stuff anywhere near your calipers or your pads. So what is highly recommended is you remove your front wheel and you use a brake block to do this. So I'm just not gonna do that. I'm a <laughs> I'm just gonna like try and squeeze it through. Fingers crossed this works. This is only for GRX. This doesn't work for SRAM. I think SRAM you need a syringe on both ends and it's a lot trickier to set up. So Shimano is very nice for setting up. So let's give it a go. Let's open the thing. Hold the lever to where I want. And then if I, if I push the fluid through, Put some more pressure on the lever and then you can just close off that valve. Put your bung in. And then fingers crossed now, once I put that top cap back in that I've probably lost, that should make my brake nice and, well, at the moment I'm having to put it really far in. So let's see if this works when I put this in. I'm also crouching down, it's really bad for me back. There will be a bit of seepage of oil, but I do have a cloth on my bars to like stop anything. And I have got a plastic sheet on the floor. So I'm not just going to ruin the carpet. And honestly, it feels much better. And I think I'm going to leave it at that because otherwise I'm going to do this video for hours. I don't know if I'm doing it the right way or not. Probably not. Definitely need to watch some tutorials online. Don't listen to me when I say how to set up brakes, but I'm happy with how mine is set up. And I'm going to go with that. They work. I can enjoy riding with them. So hopefully you did find this video informative and helpful. And you're going to go and have an awesome ride and your bike's not going to fall apart. And it's all thanks to me. You're welcome. Let me know how much I suck at setting up disc brakes in the comments. Feel free to just slate me for it. I've got no idea. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. I can't thumbs up you from here, so I'm going to throw a towel at you. Right, see you later. Bye.